This recent update for Adobe Illustrator introduced one of the most exciting improvements in years. Real-time drawing and editing powered by GPU acceleration is not a gimmick. It is an underlying technical upgrade which greatly improves the overall user experience. Join me and find out everything you need to know about this fantastic new feature. You probably already got used to the fact that whenever you're working in Illustrator and you're moving objects around or scaling them up and down or rotating them, you always only see their outline and a full rendered color version only appears once you let the object go, but not anymore. So this feature is super exciting and I can't tell you how amazing it feels to be able to do real-time drawing and editing in Illustrator with pretty much most of the tools. So the feature is in the preferences. If you are on PC, you will have to go to the edit menu, but on Mac, it's under Illustrator, preferences, and performance is the category where you will find this new option. And it's all the way at the bottom, real-time drawing and editing. Now I'm going to turn this on, click OK. And the great thing is you don't have to restart Illustrator. It already becomes active. And look at this, I can now move the object around without having any issues. So it's real-time editing, also for scaling up and down, rotating, and pretty much everything else that I can think of doing with this object. Okay, so let's see what happens if I select multiple objects, maybe all four of these. It still works fine. Let's see if I select all eight of them and start rotating them. Still works perfectly real-time. But these are fairly simple illustrations and their combined anchor points is around 1400. By the way, I'm using the simplify option for this, which was also recently improved and enhanced in Illustrator. And I even set a shortcut for it. The feature you can find under object path simplify. I use function three for it. And whenever you select an object and you use a shortcut for it, it will give you a very quick indication of the amount of anchor points. And of course, then you can simplify it as well. But let's test the real-time editing on a more complex illustration like this one, which is close to 5,000 anchor points. So with this, if I start rotating, it still works fine. If I try scaling, perfectly fine. And of course, moving around will also work real-time. And since we are talking about transformation, if you use the free transform tool, there's also a big improvement added with this recent update. Now, whenever you make changes with this tool, Illustrator is going to remember those distortions and it won't reset the bounding box. So it's almost like working with a smart object in Photoshop and essentially create non-destructive transformations. So when you select the tool, you can use E as the shortcut to get to it. There's a couple of options here, but by default, we have the simple transformations of rotation and also skewing if you drag the sides, or we can scale, of course, from the corner points. But already these, you can see that the bounding box is going to always follow the changes. But even more interestingly, if I switch to the perspective distort or free distort tools, with these, once I start making changes, notice how the bounding box now finally follows these changes. So I can add more perspective for this mask and I can make it look much bigger than it was before, but the distortion will be handled in a much smarter way, meaning that if I click away and then select the object again and go back to the free transform tool, it will show me that exact bounding box that I use for the transformation. Now, if you want to override this, you can reset the bounding box if you right click and choose transform, reset bounding box. In most cases, I would advise against this reset feature, but sometimes you might actually find it useful. Now let's raise the stakes a bit. Here we have an even more complex illustration. So I'm going to select all of these details and I will just show you the outline of this by pressing command or control Y. We can see the structure of this artwork, but even this can easily be scaled up and down, rotated and amended either as a whole or even individually. And I just love the fact that I can see these changes happening live as I'm doing the editing. Now, of course, for example, when I'm changing the height of a building, the perspective is getting messed up. So instead, what I would normally do in these cases is to move the object higher up, maybe also squeeze it together a bit, 
just so I get a more flat top. And then by double clicking, I will isolate it. And then let's see what happens if I use the direct selection tool and just select the bottom anchor points on this object and then start moving it down. Even with the direct selection tool, all the changes are happening live. And that just makes editing really so much more fun. There's another shortcut, by the way, I'm using for hiding the outlines, just to make it even clearer how the real life drawing and editing works. It's under the view menu, it's show edges. And you can see I use function four for toggling this. And whenever I select something like this building, if I press F4, I can show the outlines, or again, pressing F4, I can hide them. Most of the time, I would actually keep the edges visible, but in some cases, it's actually clearer to see what you're doing by having them turned off. Now, returning back to real-time editing, there's a couple of things that is still not real-time, like when you are transforming text. So here's the text object. It's editable text. I can make selections on it. But when I start changing its size, I will only see an outline view of it. And only when I let go, that's when it's going to update. And the same applies to standard modifications like rotation, apart from moving the object around. So that is still happening real time. But apart from editing, we are also talking about real time drawing. Now, what does that actually mean? When it comes to parts, especially with more complex appearance, again, it can be a huge difference when you are making changes to them. So let's compare how we used to work with parts before this feature was introduced. So I'm just going to go back and turn it off and select one of these parts, turn on the visibility of edges and zoom a little bit closer so we can see it better what's happening. So here, if I use the direct selection tool on an anchor point and start moving it around, I will only see the changes updating once I let go. The same applies to the curvature tool. If I select any of these points and start moving it around, we only see it updating once we let the path go. However, if we go back to the performance tab and turn on real-time drawing and now start making changes, either using the curvature tool or the direct selection tool, we can see the changes happening live. And let's not forget another feature that was introduced recently. If you are removing anchor points from a path with the pen tool, simply just by clicking on them, it's going to remove them without messing up the path. So it can contain the original shape as close as possible. So once again, now that I tidied up the path, I can just move this one anchor point around and see how the path is updating live. And I could just play whole day with this, but it gets even more fun once you start introducing additional appearance options. Like here, if you look at my appearance panel, I actually use four separate stroke settings, building it up from that bottom brown line that you can see there. On top of that, I have that thinner dashed line with the round caps, followed by these bigger dots indicating stops in this journey that we use this path for. So this one, once again, is using a dashed line option with varying gap sizes. That's why we get a little bit more randomized gaps between these dots. And then finally, another stroke on top of all of this, which is using the same dash line settings, but with a narrower or smaller white dot. So having this more complex appearance makes it even more fun to make changes and see them happening live. So once again, look at that. Not only I can bend and move this shape around, but notice how new dots are appearing while I'm moving it out. So it almost feels like I'm dragging those dots out and then I can also push them back in. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. So by now, most likely you are thinking, what can be the limitation for this feature to work? 
Well, it mainly relies on the GPU of your computer, so the graphic processor. That needs to be enabled for it to work in the first place. So on the performance, the GPU has to be enabled. And also, you can find additional information for the real-time drawing, which explains that when there is a lag found, so when the GPU is struggling with something, it automatically reverts back to the way Illustrator used to work before this feature was introduced. So it will become non-real-time. And once again, this is a smooth transition and you don't have to quit or you don't have to make any changes. You can just keep the option on, keep it enabled, keep working, and then Illustrator is going to make the call whether it can show you real-time editing or not. And that switch between the two modes can happen even while you are making a transformation. So for example, here we have these two amazing illustrations and this goat on the right has around 7,300 points, while the lion on the left has over 17,000 points. So there's a huge difference between the complexity of the two illustration. If I use the outline view, once again, command or control Y, that shows that most of the elements or objects in these illustrations are gradient meshes, which obviously further complicates these to be edited in real time. But let's see what happens if I select this guy here on the right and I start making changes. So it's working fine. I can see the real time shading and colors, but then let's see what happens if I start rotating it. It seems like it can handle even that, but will it work with the lion as well? Let's just test that out. Let's see first the scaling. And yep, there's already a switch. So now we don't see the real time colors showing. We will only see them update once I let the object go. And of course, the same thing with rotation. I will only see the changes once I let go. While this illustration on the right still will be rotated in real time. So I don't have to go back and forth changing the setting. And I don't even notice the switch between the two modes. And last but not least, there's also another long awaited feature added. Finally, now we can copy paste artboards between Illustrator documents. So just to show you this, I'm going to fit all my artboards to the screen with the shortcut command option zero or control alt zero on PC. And I'm going to use the artboard tool that's shift O and shift click on these three artboards maybe. Then use the shortcut command or control C to copy, switch to another document and command or control V to paste. And there you go, they all appear perfectly and even the names of the artboards will be transferred to this new document. So once again, here is a quick recap in the latest update of Illustrator. Now, finally, we have real-time editing and drawing, which makes it so much more fun and intuitive to interact with your illustrations. Then we also have the enhanced free transform and free distort options that remembers or retains the bounding box for the transformations. And then finally, cutting, copying, and pasting artboards between documents. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.